Right, so you're watching Life in Pictures here on Cricket.com with me, Avnish Hegde. And today we're going to be talking about Graham Smith and some of the pictures off the field, on the field and some cheeky ones there thrown in by me as well. So let's start with, of course, 2002 Graham Smith about this picture, which is, of course, Cape Town against the Aussies. Talk me through how excited you were on the day. Yeah, that's my uh, test debut for South Africa, playing against the great Australian team. I can see Adam Gilchrist is up to the, up to the stump, so that means I'm uh, coming up against the great man Shane Warne for the first time in, in my career. I mean, I, I remember the first innings being the most nervous man in the world um, and settled through the game. I was really lucky that I was fortunate that I got some runs in the second innings, I think 60 odd, um, but a memory that I'll never forget. Yeah, 60 odd, you mentioned that. I think it was Vaughan and McGraw who got you out respectively in either of innings. I mean, you talk about facing some of the greats, right? It just brings me to my next picture in this one, which is, of course, Bunnies. I mean, Easter wasn't too long ago, but uh, Zaheer Khan, I mean, where do you rank him in terms of the most fearsome bowlers you faced? Cheeky man, eh? but that's, that's still very early on in my career. I think that was the Chaps Trophy game in Sri Lanka, if I remember. Um, yeah, I think Zaheer for me was one of the most skillful bowlers I, I, I've ever faced, especially to left handers. Because I think to left handers, he got the ball to swing away. Um, he had great change of pace at the ball, the knuckle ball, you know, bowled well with the reverse swinging ball. Um, and, and, you know, just someone you always had to be on guard. And, uh, yeah, he certainly got the better of me on a couple of occasions. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was certainly, if I look back, one of the most skillful bowlers in my entire career that I faced. Okay, let's move on because, of course, we at Cricket.com are based out of India, so it's only right for us to show you this picture and just unwind some memories of touring the country back in the day. I think you toured thrice, was it? And always some different captains you came up against. Soro Ganguly here, I think, 2000. Four or five. There was Arnold Kumble in 2008, and of course MS Dhoni towards the fag end of your career. What was the best moment or memories of touring India, Smithy? Listen, I'm glad you're picking all my skinny pictures of when I was young <laughs> and after done it. I, I really appreciate that. So yeah, I, I mean, I think for me it was the, the lessons learned in India initially, just uh, learning to play in the conditions, learning the culture, the people. I mean, everyone that comes to India speaks about the fan craze, the noise in the stadiums, the experience of, you know, cricket being a religion. But um, I think for me as well was just experiencing the way um, the talent, uh, you know, was so allowed to grow in India. I mean, everyone had a different style, a different way of playing the game, a different way of looking at the game. And I think sometimes out of, like certainly out of South Africa and some of the other Western nations, you can be a little bit too rigid, you know, you coach, you maybe can be overcoached and various other things. But just, just seeing the, the natural talent and ability uh, of India was, was just exciting. Obviously, you've been fortunate to make some good friends, you know, Dada in that picture. We've worked closely together in our roles in sports. So, yeah, uh, some, some wonderful memories of India. Mm, and across the border, of course, we've got this picture we want you to explain in terms of having your own cake and eating it too, huh? <laughs> you know, um, from memory, I think that was my 100th test as, uh, as, as a captain in international cricket. So, uh, a feat that, you know, no one had ever achieved. I think I, this is first Alan Border, then, I mean, first team Fleming, then Alan Border, I think it was in 94 or 96 test matches. I went on to captain my country over a hundred times, uh, which is for me an incredible thing to look back on. And uh, that was just my, you know, all the people that have been through the journey with me, my sponsors, you know, spoiling me with the cake. You know, they, they were trying to fatten me up already at the, at the end of my career. I mean, I say that in the nicest sense. So let's move on to the next one here because we have a few more left. And this is, of course, perhaps the match of the career, according to you or many fans around the world. Just look at that scorecard. And talk me through what was going through the halfway mark because 434, unfathomable chase, Smithy. Unfathomable and uh, walking off the field after choosing, uh, winning the toss and choosing to bowl first. You can imagine I wasn't feeling that great <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as, as a captain. But, um, you know, went in, we had a very short space of time to turn, the, turn around. And uh, I, was, I thought, let me pad up first because I'm going to open the batting up for 10 minutes. Let me get that done first. Uh, start getting my head ready to bat and we'll sort of get on to, you know, getting the team in the right frame of mind. Uh, and while I was padding up, Shark Callis came loitering into the room and said, Bowlers, I think we've done a great job. They're 15 runs short. 
um, which, as you can imagine, you know, with someone the team scored 434, it, it broke the ice a little bit, and, and everyone burst out laughing. We then set some targets, and everyone burst out laughing again. Um, and, and then it was just about knowing, you know, I'm going out first. How do we get the team off to a good start, getting some momentum? Um, but what a roller coaster! I mean, I, I played well with 90 or 50 odd, but you know, Herschel Gibbs, Gibbs knock incredible. Ricky Ponting's knock incredible. Um, and I think probably still the greatest ODI I ever played in terms of the ebbs and the flows and the final ball finish and the emotions of the bull ring and the wondrous. Yeah, indeed. One of the most spe spectacular ODIs I've ever seen. I'm kind of retracing in my head and fumbling in my words. That's how excited I was I was as a kid watching it. Now let's move on to, of course, the longest format because unfortunately South Africa didn't win that many silverware in terms of ODIs at T20s, but this one would have definitely been special. Doing it at the home of cricket, I mean, talk me through the emotions at this point in time. Yeah, I mean, over this period of about five or six years, we built an incredible uh, test lineup. I mean, we, I don't think we lost a series away from home for about six years, um, which is incredible. You know, the ability to travel and be successful is unique, and I think even in today's time, is, is unique on a consistent level. So we we drew in India. I remember on that season, we we won in England, won in Australia. Um, you know, we've done that back to back, some incredible feats. So, yeah, I mean, that was number one in the world, beat England, uh, two in the series, one at the Oval, one at, uh, at Lords. Um, and, yeah, well, I think we became number one in all formats uh, around that period as well, which was, yeah, it was a fun time. I mean, uh, I remember, I guess the only disappointing part of that tour was, you know, Mark Boucher's um, terrible eye injury. Um, uh, so that was the only sort of uh, tough memory of that tour, but the rest was, was incredible. It was incredible and of course a test match career of yours spanning 12 years exactly from March 2002 to March 2014. Let's speak of the latter right now because we showed you the one earlier and this is a great picture. I'm sure you've got it somewhere in your house because I think it was that fourth test against the Aussies again Cape Town. I don't want to talk about your personal achievements in that test match but you must have been a very proud man that day. Obviously looking back I mean I don't have that photo send it on to me i'd love to love to have it but no it was a tough time for me as well i mean not many people don't know that my daughter was young and she got burnt with uh, hot water a, a kettle um, while i was playing in the second test actually so i spent every morning of that test match in, in hospital with her um, having having surgery so mentally and emotionally i was a, a little bit of a wreck i probably looking back in hindsight should never have played that game um, i might have had a longer career than might have, might have hung around a little bit longer but uh, yeah, but um, decided to pull the plug on, on, on uh, as you say, a 12-year career playing for South Africa, captaining test matches over 100 times, you know, 190 odd ODIs. I think I think someone said I scored over 17,000 runs or something. So I can't complain. Um, you know, just very lucky and, and lucky to have Newlands as my home stadium. So please send me that picture. I'd love to have that up in the house. <laughs> we will try to send it to you from Cricket.com's. Uh, shipping route, we can assure you that. Now, let's of course uh, finish up by showing you a picture which makes me sad, but nonetheless, you chuffed. And this is this one, and <laughs> Liverpool, of course, being the closest thing to your heart of cricket, that is, I'm guessing. Have you ever been to Anfield, especially in a rocking European night? How much of them do you follow? Tell us more. Listen, I was sharing to someone today, I've been there. I mean, that picture's from the tunnel. Um, and I was saying to someone today, you know, and I was telling them I'm off to the RPL on Monday and uh, trying to debate how I can get to watch this incredible Liverpool team and hopefully, you know, with everything on the line, it's coming and you know, we need to get to the game. So, yeah, uh, obviously a big Liverpool fan. Loved the other night against Man United. Uh, so many things to look forward to. So much pressure going into the home run for them. And, yeah, let's, looking forward to, to being a part of it. I'll tell you what, we're shooting this at the time where it's that pre quadruple vibes. Hopefully, from a United perspective, that doesn't stand true. But Graham Smith, it's been absolutely delightful to kind of unravel your career. There were plenty more. Let us know in the comments below which one you guys might have missed. We wanted to really get the other one up where he was batting with the broken arm, but we didn't want to make him remember some of the old injuries, so to speak. But Graham Smith, thank you so much for your time on Life at Pictures. It's a goodbye from us and Cricket.com.